Hi guys, welcome back to Wheel Debate Reviews and welcome back to the Rewind Review series here on the channel where we're talking about Grant Morrison's X-Men. Today we're on to issue 148, Planet X, part 3 of 5. Now this issue is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, we kind of find out that Magneto really didn't have a plan for what he was doing and um, we he kind of comes up with one like on the fly which is an interesting uh, uh character turn for for magneto and it kind of plays into something else that we had in this run and also we get to catch up with logan and gene as they are floating around space in asteroid m and then there's a big old cliffhanger ending in this one so um those are i think the two biggest pieces of of this one otherwise it's kind of a ugh issue but um let's go uh go ahead and go through this one page by page like we usually do. Alright, first off, it's interesting that Beast is on the cover, because I don't think Beast shows up in this issue at all. Alright, so previously um, on, on X-Men, previously on X-Men, <laughs> we had Logan, um, he blew up the Weapon Plus satellite, um, or a space station, and then it was either built on the remnants of Asteroid M, or he got blown off of the space station onto asteroid i'm like i'm not clear on that and there might be a line in here about that and then obviously gene went up there to find him and and that's where they find we find these two characters here trying to survive logan here says the good news we've probably got air for another 36 hours the bad news will hit the surface of the sun in 24 yeah that's that's pretty bad news and you can see them hurtling toward uh the sun here um, Gene says, the station's too heavy to move, and I tried to slow down the air molecules with my mind. Everything's just too hot, Logan. And Logan says, 130 degrees and rising. Uh, I can do something, uh, unless I can do something with the power. 130 degrees is hot. I live in Texas, and it gets gross here. So I know what they're feeling there. That thing probably feels like an oven. We get, um... Gene asks what about what happened to Weapon 15. Um, Logan says uh, he dropped his guard and in space, and I gutted him. Of course, Wolverine managed to best the 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 best that uh, the Weapon Plus program uh, can put out, right? He says here um, he was all set to get um, to lead the charge against the whole mutant race. So so don't give me a hard time. I blew up. I blew the Weapon Plus station to hell, we wrestled, and then we hit this rock. There it is. So yeah, they blew up that space station and then ended up landing on, on Asteroid M that was still um, floating around. He says, Asteroid M, he used to call these hideouts. It swung right into place and waited in orbit until you got here. The whole damn thing's been a trap, Genie, all the way down the line, and I didn't even smell him until now. So that, that brings up another, another question of like, how Wolverine, um, like, how they didn't notice that, like, Zorn was Magneto? Like, I know you can, like, the, his helmet probably had the telepathic shielding that Magneto's helmets typically have, but, like, Wolverine couldn't smell it on him. Other characters couldn't figure it out either. I don't know, just, I'm, that's, that whole thing still doesn't, you know, sit well with me, but what does sit well with me is this Phil Jimenez art. Oh, God, it's absolutely amazing. Alright, so speaking of Zorn and Magneto, we get an interesting scene here. So, um, Ernst, uh, one of Zorn's special class here, this kind of little girl that looks like an old woman that's apparently super powerful, is pining after Zorn. She's sad that Zorn's gone, and we saw a scene like this in a last issue uh, as well. And so she's saying here, I miss Mr. Zorn. He used to tell us about China and Buddha and, and nice things. When is he coming back? And then Magneto kind of braids her. He says, he was a fiction, a little earnest. How often must I explain? Uh, I made him up with the help of my supporters in China. And she says, but Mr. Zorn was nice. And he says, there is no Zorn. There was only Magneto. Um, and so it's uh, like this line right here. He was only a fiction, a little Ernst. How often must I explain that? Almost feels like more, that's that. Yes, it's Magneto talking to Ernst, but it also feels like it's Morrison talking to the reader, like reassure, like telling us once again. Yeah, there was no Zorn. It was always Magneto after the the reveal of this uh, two issues ago, and then like I said, there was another scene like this in the previous issue where uh, I think it was it was Ernst kind of saying like, "Hey, I miss kind of miss Zorn. Where is he?" And then other characters, you know, again berating her for not realizing that Zorn is is truly. Good. 
gone. Um, and again, that feels very much aimed at the readers as much as it is um, the characters here. So um, we get Toad coming in saying that there's chaos in the streets, then the people need to know what's happening. Uh, Magneto says, calm yourself, Toad. I don't want I don't want bad news. Bring me good news. Uh, then feed me a few sound bites. Everyone can understand. That feels like all of Facebook right there. Feed me a few sound, bo- sound bites. I can understand. Also Twitter. Uh, I'll, I'm an equal opportunity social media hater. Um, and then Toad says, see, they really have no idea what you're talking about when you do all your big Shakespearean stuff. Um, I'm only telling you what it's like out there. They're banging at the moon for some action. Magneto, a public hanging anything. And then Magneto says, since when did a good education and an extensive background become handicapped? So we can see that the people are, um, the, the mutants are uh, restless. They want some sort of action, some sort of big, sweeping, grandiose uh, action from their their new leader, Magneto. And then he um, says, um, give me a moment. Stay there with the others. I'd like to be alone for a moment. And then he goes to talk with Charles, or kind of talk at Charles, because Charles is still in kind of his uh, matrix tube here with all of the uh, things poking and prodding at him. And this is kind of an interesting moment here for Magneto that I talked about at the beginning, which mirrors a previous plot point. Um, uh, So Magneto says, uh, I fed them so many lies, old friend, engineered a species war in your name. I don't expect I'll have much time before reprisals commence. You understand, I have to do something unforgettable. Remember that reversal of the Earth's magnetic poles I talked about before but never went through with? North will become south. The event will obliterate the weak human, rewire mutant brains, and alter planetary consciousness forever. One of my old ideas, admittedly, but still a good one. So, did did Magneto not have a plan when he took over? Like, why did he, like, get into Xavier's mansion? Like, why did he come up with Zorn? How did he know that, like, how? There's so many unanswered questions with this stupid subplot. I'm tired of asking them almost. So, like, and it just, like, one question leads me one step back to another question to another step question, another another one back and back and back. And it's like, how did this whole thing come together? Like, why did Magneto come up with the personality of Zorn? Why did he put it in this fake um, facility there in China? How did he know the X-Men were going to get there? How did he lead them there? Did he know that they were going to go after John Sublime um, and the U-Men? What happened there? And if there's evidence of this, I'll have to, I'd have to go back and, and, and dig for it. But and then now he, we get here. What was his plan? Just to like, you know, take down Xavier from the inside, and then you know, bust out and do what he's doing here. But even when he's done this, he's it's like, ah, oh, what, what, uh, what, what plan should I do? I mean, they the people want action. Hey, remember that old plan that I had about just screwing up the world? You know, turning it um, topsy turvy with the North and the South poles. Yeah, I I think I think I'll do that one. That sounds like a good plan. And if Morrison always knew, like, there, there's evidence that maybe Morrison knew that that's the plan that he wanted Magneto to do, because we've seen the maps turned upside down, right, north become south, and things like that, then why is he talking like this, like he's just coming up with it on the fly, so it's either bad dialogue here that doesn't recognize, that where Magneto is seemingly coming up with it on the spot, but it's been the plan the whole time, or... Um, it's Morrison not knowing what the plan was until he he wrote it down here. I don't know which is true. Whatever. Let's move on. Let's move on. We've we've spent enough time um, on that one. And he talks some more to um, uh, to Xavier here. You know, kind of pokes at him a little bit. For um, he says, "Your timid, colorless leadership has been forgotten. You failed to inspire uh, to inspire Charles. While I become a legend in death and a savior upon my return, I always come back. Haven't you noticed? Perhaps that's my secondary mutation. No, that's uh, Moira McTaggart's secondary <laughs> mutation. She's the one that always resurrects herself and uh, creates a new timeline. Uh, maybe that's where um, <laughs> uh, Hickman got that idea with uh, characters always always coming." back here. 
uh, Magneto says here, while I offer a new map of tomorrow and the triumph of Homo Superior, this city is only the beginning. I offer them utopia here and now, the shining morning of the mutants. Yeah, yeah, all right, Magneto. Sit down, shut up, we'll get to you here in a minute. All right, and then we go back up to Asteroid M. And there's a lot of dialogue here between these two characters that I there's I don't get a lot out of it. We talk about the Phoenix um, a little bit. Um, uh, Logan asks, he's like, y you can make the Phoenix... Uh, you have the Phoenix Force inside you, right? I know everyone's scared it's going to eat you up, but I have a question. Can it fly in space? And Gene says, first off, let's stop talking because it uses oxygen. Um, but also, let me tell you what I know about the Phoenix. She says, when I was 13, I realized I could control matter with my mind. Just crude stuff at first, lifting things and throwing them across the room. Then it progressed with the professor's help. I was able to manipulate dozens of objects at once. Now I'm learning to move more molecules around and expand my senses across all boundaries uh the phoenix force isn't um like that logan he says she could become a god and make the universe in her basically in her own image and she says the phoenix force isn't like that it's more like it it burns away what doesn't work it eats planets and stars it talks to me and if i get too close it replaces me very much like multiple personality disorder she says, maybe it's judging me too. Uh, all I know is my body needs oxygen and water to function and there's nothing out there in the vacuum. I can't fly through space, not yet anyway, not the way you mean. So we're kind of getting an idea of what this iteration or kind of Morrison's interpretation of, of the Phoenix Force is. Um, and so uh, Logan does Logan things and kind of pulls a Kylo Ren here and, uh, and lashes out at everything. Uh, um... Jean here says, uh, Esme, the little blonde girl from Emma's group, was caught dealing kick and tried to um, uh, kill Emma and implicate young angels. So where does Magneto fit into all of this? Where does Magneto fit into all of this? And so we go back to Magneto here where they're kind of talking about what, what they're going to do. Esme actually offers up a plan of, I think we should have uh, the most appalling series of human sacrifices as soon as possible. It has to look like we're absolutely serious about changing the world, doesn't it? And so they're talking about um, just like murdering people in the streets there and making, you know, a show of it and you can see uh beak here is like extermination we're gonna kill all of the humans um and then we go up here and we get some more uh like they're really starting to lose oxygen and getting hot and they're starting to um you know just think about ice cream and beer uh, ice cream and and beer uh, appropriately here and they're um just trying to talk about how they're going to survive and then um, Wolverine is, you know, basically like we we know this isn't going to 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 work out for for what we're going to do, and so um, I know I'm kind of skipping here. I, this is a lot of the dialogue that I didn't get um, a, a whole lot out of, um, and then Logan kills uh, Gene, kind of an act of mercy there, and he says um, basically we're going to to go out in in a blaze of glory, and then again in another parallel to to Hickman's run where a few characters burn up in the sun, he picks up Gene and walks them, uh, opens the door and walks them out into the sun. And you can see they just burn up here. And then the last thing we see is a little Phoenix force uh, show up in Jean's eyes. And that's where we leave them burned up in the sun, at least for the moment. And we'll pick that up in next issue. So I know I skipped through a, a fair bit of the... Um, the end there with a lot of their dialogue, but um, I read it through it a couple times and not a lot of it stuck out to me as, as worth talking about. The big points in this one where were Magneto's plan and did he come up with that beforehand or did he just kind of come up with it on the fly and the fact that Logan and Gene died and we're probably going it's going to trigger the phoenix force coming through full force in next issue so guys what do you think about this one let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below thank you so much for watching if it's your first time here at the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button for me it would mean a lot and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop